finance. Now it's new and improved. Fortified with the ingredients that investors love. On today's episode, easy access to crypto exchanges. Welcome back, everyone. It's July 31st, 2020. I'm Jerry Hall, and here's the view from Costa Rica. Well, I'm taking a view and a look at the YouTube channel. Basically, April 1st of this year, I started creating cryptocurrency content for this channel. Started with 58 subscribers, and we're now up over 3,400 in three months. Thank you. Thank you all for your subscriptions, the comments that you leave, and the engagement on Facebook and Twitter. It's all very much appreciated. A quick report on the channel for those of you that remember, I pledged all revenue from this channel to foster financial literacy. Now the first payment came. Now I had also promised that 1% of the monthly revenue would go to XRP Arcade. That was sent. Leonidas, I hope it helps. The balance is being put into Cardano. I will stake it until it reaches a point that I can actually do something with it. But that money is carefully tucked away. It's going to be working and we will be able to get some cool software and put out some great content that will last hopefully forever and impact people in a positive way. That's the whole goal of this channel is to help each and every one of us become better investors. I have found for myself that teaching or talking about a subject is one of the best ways to truly learn it. So I will continue to find incredible people that can bring value to my experience as an investor and really as a human being walking the planet. If there's a human being that you'd like to see on the show, leave them in the comments. I'll see if I can get them on and have a conversation. We've got some, some folks in the hopper right now. I'm hoping that we can get the schedule locked down. I will tell you, I did receive a response letter from the OCC and they told me, Jerry, at this time, we are unable to schedule an interview with you and Brian Brooks. Hopefully that will change in the future but I do appreciate them taking the time to respond. Let's get into what I see going on in the markets now and what's got me encouraged. One of the elements that has been in play for a while in my mind is when this space would actually start to integrate with the existing capital markets. And what I'm talking about is your traditional brokerages having products and their sales teams, which are called financial advisors, wealth managers, consultants, what have you, reaching out to the public to gain investment on an array of investment products that are focused around digital assets. Well, here we can see Grayscale has already put together a digital currency toolkit for financial advisors. Now we all know Grayscale is very slanted towards the Bitcoin slash proof of work assets that are on the board. I am sure as time goes on that they will increase their basket of offerings because there is no crypto that's one size fits all. I've made my picks, you've made your picks. We continue to keep our eyes open for new and exciting projects that are coming down the board. And I don't believe Grayscale is any different. This is that first volley, folks. This is that service across the net for those enjoying tennis references. It's going to be really fun to watch this grow up. But we're hitting that inflection point where things are speeding up. How much of it can be attributed to the pandemic? I think there's a lot. I think the pandemic really brought to the surface a lot of the underlying, well, I would say deficiencies in the existing system, the way networks have been working. 
it's really shown and I mean, really focused the light on it. So it's going to be fun to see this moving forward. But let's get into some of these other incredible things that are going on. Mike Dudas, like him or hate him, this dude is right on the money with this tweet. The FinTech IPO parade is set to continue as these digital asset startups mature into full-fledged publicly traded companies producing value for their shareholders, we are going to see a swarm of money, maybe that's unparalleled in history. Investors are seeking yield in those traditional percentages have been declining year over year. You can't make any money in bonds, really, unless you are a highly skilled trader. But as an investor, buying bonds is a losing proposition. It's really a big, huge nothing burger. If you look at valuation and you're a value investor and you look at the equity markets, equities are overpriced. The companies that are offering these equities are not worth the price of their stock. It's disgusting. And unless you've got some kind of crystal ball on market movement, the, real, the only folks that are going to make any real money are traders. Investors are going to get slaughtered. They're going to get slaughtered when the true value of these companies is realized in the marketplace and the valuations of the stocks they hold go down. It's inevitable. Speaking of banks, this is a sector of capital markets that I've kept my eye on because I see year over year, the primary revenue generator for a bank is not necessarily the services they provide for their customers, but the loans they generate and sell to their customers. And as interest rates have continued to go down, banks are the hardest hit. Now, sure, you can say, hey, Jerry, Visa and MasterCard, are making a ton of money, and that's true. Consumer credit is a completely different ball game than commercial credit from a bank, whether it be for real estate, a business loan, etc. Two totally different categories. One's operating with extremely high margins, i.e. the credit card companies, because consumer credit is as high as 26%, but it also is risky because you've got a tremendous amount of defaults. Not that there aren't defaults in the residential mortgage sector, the commercial mortgage sector, and even the business sector. Banks are looking for yield. They're looking for ways to increase products and the range of products that they offer their customers. Innovation is absolutely key here because it's all about necessity. They want to live. They want to survive. And we all know with the OCC document, a whole host of products is coming right down the pike to offer these customers. And I'm excited to see that. And I'm sure that you are also. Now, I love this one. This is CZ Binance responding to Raul Powell. Now, Raul is talking about, hey, another reminder not to lose sight of the big picture. The UK banks are, a break that are about to break the only support since the start of the index in 1986. Raul's drawing attention to the fact that banks have been gasping for their last breath. They are struggling to stay above water. And BZ saying, hey, some of them will be picked up by crypto businesses who want the ease who want to ease the fiat on-ramps, saying for a friend. All right, we have an email address for that, fiat at Binance.com. That's right, don't be shocked if you see CZ buy a big bank. Now, it won't be a Bank of America or, or a Citibank or a Goldman Sachs, what have you, JP Morgan, or even a PNC, but I'm sure he's gonna get himself into a national bank in the United States and a bank that has access all throughout Europe. And he may even partner with an SBI. 
it is the natural progression of things. It's Darwinian in nature. It's just going to have different names associated this time. The next 12 months will completely reshape the landscape of how all of this is going down. Now I bring you to this Digital Asset News YouTube channel to let you know Dan from Digital Asset News will be joining me tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the live stream, as well as Eagle from Blockchain Monkeys. We're going to talk about VeChain. We're going to talk about Cardano. I'm sure that XRP is going to come up. We're going to talk about exit strategies. We're going to talk about best practices as it pertains to being an investor. We're going to look at traditionally when markets start to hit their inflection points and the market starts to hit another gear. I honestly believe that we are at that time and space in this market. We are reaching an inflection point and at that point, the game will change. The sheer number of players in this space is gonna grow and it's gonna grow exponentially. Many of you know throughout my previous videos, I've talked a lot about the small base of investors that have been swimming around in this space for the last couple of years. I believe the numbers are under 40 million total globally. Well, we know we have an addressable market of existing investors of 550 million globally. Expect both those numbers to grow and especially the digital asset space, expect that to grow exponentially. We could start looking at 10, 15% of that 550, 560 million existing legacy investor pool in the next couple of months coming into crypto with some percentage of their portfolio. I'm talking about the family offices that are talking to dudes like Anthony Pompliano. I'm talking about pension funds that are looking for ways to create yield. Well, Bitcoin doesn't really create yield. Bitcoin is a capital appreciation play, but an asset like VeChain or Cardano, those are ways to create yield. Hello, hello. Anyway, folks, it's going to be a fun stream tonight. I'm encouraging you all to join and try something novel. Let's do this. We'll have an experiment. Invite a friend over. Get a six pack or a nice bottle of wine. Hang out in the kitchen and make a meal together. Turn on the stream. Be a part of the conversation. Join us in the chat. Ask your questions. Make your comments. As much as we want to help educate the public, you, the public, are educating us. We're doing this all together, folks. So that's enough for me. That's been my take from Costa Rica. And until next time, everybody, Pura Vida.